Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, we're continuing down to the end of the year with all the countdowns and all the lists. I'm sure you're being inundated with them if you follow any other movie review channels because that is just what we do at the end of the year. We like to rank things. We like to say what was the best and what was the worst. And I've already had my top five worst films of 2018 out. And before I get to my top ten, best films of 2018. There's still a few movies that I want to see before I definitively put that list out there, which should be over the next couple of days before the new year. If not, then on January 1st itself, I want to do my underrated and overrated films of 2018, starting off today with my top five most overrated films of 2018 in order to fill and in, in order to be a part of this category in order to be even eligible for this grand wonderful <laughs> steam that you get from Odin here on the Odin's Movie Vlog channel is that you have to have a movie that I thought was trite that I thought was overblown and that way too many critics gave positive reviews to so it's not something that it's an audience favorite that I'm attacking though I'm sure I could probably have some of those in this list all the ones in this list though had very, very good uh, critic scores. Some of them had good audience scores as well. Again, you'll see a lot of, you know, all these are certified fresh movies, and these are films that I thought were just so overdone and just not nearly as good as a lot of people said that they were. So I'm going to start off with some dishonorable mentions, starting off with Ready Player One. So Ready Player One was also on my worst of list, and the reason why is because I was a huge fan of the book. I know I saw a lot of comments saying that they did not like the book, or that they liked the movie, so very opposite of where I felt. But honestly, I thought the book was a great story. I thought that, especially if you listen to the audiobook version, the way that they do the voices and the way that the story comes together in the audiobook works very well. I'm not sure exactly how it would translate just on words on a page and you interpreting the things for yourself, but I know that for me, as someone who struggles to read in general, having that person reading the story and doing characters and doing voices definitely helped me better understand the world, helped build the world of the story itself, and it was great. Ready Player One, the movie, just didn't do that. Spielberg did a great job as far as throwing references in there. And as much as I love pop culture references, I'm a walking thesaurus of pop culture references. I quote movies and so many different things in my daily life. Every single moment of the day, I'm thinking of some kind of movie or some kind of reference. But even then, that does not make a good movie. If you just have nothing but pop culture references with no underlying story which this film didn't really have, that is where the problem comes in. So pop culture references were there. The actors were great. I thought the acting and the persons that they chose for each character was perfect. There just wasn't a cohesive underlying story to keep everything on track, which makes this my dishonor one of my dishonorable mentions for films that I thought got way overhyped, got way too much love from critics, when in reality the film itself just did not hold up because it didn't really have much of a story to tell since it just decided to fall into nothing but nonstop references. Another film, and this one I'm probably going to get some flack for, I'm probably going to get some hate for, is Creed 2. So I just saw Creed 2 over the past couple weeks, and I came out of it bored to tears. If it was just the last 30 minutes, if it was just the last part of the film where he's training, the montage of him training, and the final fight sequence, and the very, very end of the film when they tie in, essentially, different Rocky films that have come out over time with certain characters that they bring in, if it had just been that, I would have been absolutely on board with this film. But the problem is, is that there's another hour, hour and a half of the film that just isn't interesting. It's boring. It, it just has very, very bad pacing, especially in the very beginning. And as I mentioned in my review of Creed 2, there is a good reason why that is the case. It is because there is a person directing this film. This was not a, a Coogler film. Coogler obviously has done great things since Creed. Uh, I've mentioned this before. I was actually a huge fan of his work on Fruitvale Station. I even think he did a fine job on Black Panther. Even though Black Panther might not be my favorite of films, it is still well directed. He is not a part of Creed 2 here, and it shows. You have a very green director. I showed the credentials of the director last time I talked about this movie, and he does not have a lot of films underneath his belt, so it makes a lot of sense that the film would not be nearly as cohesive of a story. And I think that a lot of critics gave this film a little bit too much love because of the subject matter and because of just the overall story that it is trying to tell. And I just couldn't get into it. It was not my favorite of the year. I think it was vastly overrated. It's definitely not in my top five, but it is still one that's overrated nonetheless. As you can see, both audiences and critics like this, just like with Ready Player One. Even this, a little bit more than, you know, in both the audience and the critic score, I just couldn't find any real life to this film. If it was just the last 30 minutes, I would be fine. 
but I fell asleep in the middle of the movie because it slows down so much and it's just not interesting. And all of that comes from the fact that you have a director who does not know how to seamlessly tie these scenes from one to the next in a cohesive and interesting way. And so it makes sense to me, at least, why this film didn't quite reach up to my own personal expectations after Creed 1 was phenomenal. Creed 1 is probably my second favorite, if not third favorite, Rocky film in the entire franchise. But Creed 2 is definitely at the bottom, and I said this on Twitter, and I know I got a lot of flack for it. Creed 2, in my opinion, is worse than Rocky 5, and I say that because at least Rocky 5 is entertaining. I'm not saying that it's a better made movie, but at least I can be entertained by Rocky 5 and this the craziness that happens in that movie. This one, I'm bored to tears, and I just, I can't recommend it. All right, those are my two dishonorable mentions. Now I'm getting into my top five. So my fifth choice. My number five pick on one of the most overrated films of 2018 actually just got added on a few days ago. So if you've been following me on Twitter, you know that I've been on a watching spree. I've been trying to catch up with as many movies of 2018 that I can, not just for my own personal list, but also because I like seeing movies that get talked about. I like seeing movies that are very hyped up because I want to see, do they live up to the hype? Are people just shilling it up when they put when they give their amazing uh, you know, five-star, four-star reviews? I want to know if it is actually true or not. I actually just watched eighth grade and, and I'm currently in the process of watching mid 90s and they're very similar as far as being you know independent films this next one though is a film that I have to say I'm actually surprised that it's on my list and I'm going to go into more detail and that is Black Klansman Black Klansman to me is one of the most overrated films of 2018 remember that this is not just going based on their scores so it's not going to be in any order as far as what the numbers of the tomato meter or the audience score are this is purely from my own perspective this is what I feel is one of the most overrated films of the year and it's really sad because I will say that 99% of Black Klansmen is absolutely fantastic. If you were just to watch the movie all the way until the very end when they start burning across, if you were just to stop there, you would say, hey, that was a great movie. It was funny. It was informative. And guess what? It's telling a story in a certain period of time where this very much would have happened. The problem with this movie, though, and the reason why I put this in most overrated, it was on pace to become in my top five favorite films of 2018. And then Spike Lee, who is known for his political nonsense, decided to cut in modern day footage from various riots across the United States, put in some footage of Donald Trump, put in some footage of various things being said, and basically showed that the entire movie was meant to serve those clips. And it really made me upset because he had a very good movie, it was unique, it had a good message in and of itself, but then he had to politicize the entire thing, and also he had to show that he didn't really care about making a fun, awesome movie, he only wanted to make a movie to get you interested so that way he could show you the very end. Because if he had showed you the very end, in the very beginning of the film, I guarantee you, a lot of other people would have been turned off by it very, very quickly, but instead, he gives you an amazing film with great acting, great, great direction, great writing, everything is great about it. But the last, you know, and some people say, how can you let the last two minutes of the film ruin the entire thing? Because when you realize what the message of the film is, and you start to go back and say, oh, that's why he did this. That's why he did that. It sours the entire film. It would be like if you saw an amazing film, and then you found out the director was a white supremacist, and the entire film was meant to support the KKK. You very rightly would say, oh, well, that movie is terrible. Same thing happens here, obviously from an op opposite perspective. It is the same type of thing, though, where the last couple of minutes define the entire film and make this one of the most overrated films of the year. 95% Rotten Tomatoes. It makes a lot of sense that so many critics and even audiences would like this film. Maybe because they agree with the ending. I know especially the critics do um, coming to that point. But at the end of the day, this is a film where if you want to watch it and you want to enjoy how talented Spike Lee is, watch it until the cross starts burning at the very end and then turn it off. Just stop watching it and you will be perfectly content. You'll never know what I'm talking about. But if you keep on watching, in many cases, I think, especially if you're watching me right now, it'll probably uh, make you upset because he just totally politicizes everything and I think that he misses the mark in his political messaging. That's just me though. All right, coming in at my number four most overrated film of... <laughs> Number four most overrated film of 2018. The reason why this is on there is Ocean's 8, of course. And the reason why it's on there, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself, is because even though this is not certified fresh, the fact that this movie has a 68% of Rotten Tomatoes, the fact that 68% of 68% of critics like this film, you know, ignore the audience score for a second. You know, 20, 213 gave this a fresh rating. And if you actually read some of the comments, you realize, oh, these are people who obviously have a political agenda here. And I've said this before. Sandra Bullock is great. 
Kate Blanchett is fantastic, but this movie doesn't need to exist. It, it need it has as much need to exist as Ocean's 13 does. Like no one really wanted Ocean's 13 when it came out because it just kept copying the same formula. This film copies the same exact formula only instead, oh my god, it's an all female cast. And that's what you see in almost every single critic's consensus. That's what you see in every single, uh, you know, any positive review of this film. That's all you hear about is the screen representation and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm sorry, but that doesn't make a movie good. At the end of the day, this movie is contrived. This movie just borrows from the previous films, which I think do better because it's Steven Soderbergh. And I honestly just think that this film misses the mark on so many different ways, which is why it's my number four most overrated film of 2018. Probably the lowest score on this list going forward as far as what the critics have to say, but still, it's fresh, and so therefore, it was eligible, and I had to put it on there because I am just so sick and tired, going back all the way to Ghostbusters 2016, I am so sick and tired of movies being made that are based on previous material, and the only major change that is done is, oh, we're going to make it an all-female cast, or oh, the lead's going to be a female. How about instead you make great stories, new original stories, hey, is, is that such a crazy concept, Hollywood? Starring females. Why can't you do that instead? Why can't you make your own stories? Why do you have to keep on taking former properties and then the only change that you do is the gender or the race of the person involved? It's lazy writing, it's lazy filmmaking and storytelling, and it's overrated. So don't watch this film. And in fact, just watch Ocean's 11, maybe Ocean's 12, and then just leave it there. This film to me just should not it exist. And I imagine that it doesn't exist actually within the Ocean's universe because it is that bad. All right, coming in at number three, my third most overrated film of the year, Thoroughbreds. I had some people who did not like the fact that I crapped on this movie. I just don't like it. I think that it is total... Uh, not even Oscar bait at this point. This is meant for critics. It is so subversive. It is so like down. It, it, basically, it does. It tries to do. The filmmaker here tries to do everything within his power to make a film that only the staunchest of critics could possibly like. Luckily, even though I'm a staunch critic, I'm also not bought in so easily to this type of nonsense. This film is boring. The two lead actresses are fantastic as far as their talent. I've seen them do great work in other films. In this film, almost. Almost their the entire life of their character is just taken out that the, the characters do things for no reason none of it makes any sense and at the end of the day you're left with a film that has no heart that has no soul and you could just forget about it. I, as i said before this was two hours of my life that i can never get back it was that kind of a movie where the whole time i was like oh i kept, kept hearing about how amazing it was and i left it saying wow that movie was such a train wreck was so hard to get through and it's a film that most people are never going to talk about ever again ergo being on my top most overrated films since 87% of critics loved this movie with a 7.2 out of 10 average score. Coming in at number two for my most overrated films of 2018, First Reformed. Ah, yes, First Reformed. Some people uh, thought I did, a, I was a little too harsh on First Reformed. I still stand by it. I think that this film is beautifully made. It's beautifully shot. Again, I can speak from an objective standpoint. There are some really good things that this movie has, but that doesn't change the fact that the political messaging of this film really does take on a voice of its own. And some people say, well, don't listen to what the director says outside of the film. Just look at the film itself. Well, I understand that to an extent, but the problem is, is that if the film director is trying to say his vision, and that vision coincides with the vision that the film presents, and you can therefore read into it even more so because it's the director himself who's talking about it, well then, it's a pretty safe bet that that's the overall purpose of the film itself, is to have this type of alarmism in there. And I think that that's a problem, because it really does just ruin the entirety of the film. The ending especially just comes out of nowhere, doesn't make any sense also. So even if you look at it from an objective standpoint, from a writing standpoint, the end is, is questionable at best. I'm sure that some people out there who are writers might be able to say, well, I think it works because of this, 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 and you might be right, but it's questionable at best. At the very, you know, at the very least, all I can say is that this film is given a lot of love because of the subject matter of the film. I mean, if you, I think that all of us can step back for a second and say, yes, that is the reason why this film gets so much love is because of the overall subject matter, which is why this is my second most overrated film of the year. This is one where <laughs> someone might think, why isn't Thoroughbreds higher on the list? Because this one is not one that I thought was a total waste of time because there are some really beautiful shots, even the very beginning. So well done. Even Thoroughbreds has some good cinematography, but the, the, the performances just take you out of it. The only bad thing about this is the message. Like, the only bad thing about this is the message. But with that being said, because this one is definitely more highly regarded than Thoroughbreds is, that's what made it, you know, creep up a little bit more than Thoroughbreds on my list. And also, it's the one that's a little bit fresher in my mind, seeing that I saw this only a few weeks ago, while Thoroughbreds I saw earlier in the year when it first came out in theaters. 
And yeah, I just think that all of these films that I've mentioned so far, you know, obviously I think, you know, Ready Player One, you might be able to have fun with, Creed Two, might be able to have fun with, and it's a film that Creed Two, I might watch again because a lot of people are saying, oh no, maybe watch it again, maybe it was your mood, etc. Very well could be. Maybe I'll watch it again when it comes out on video, but we shall see. But <laughs> guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, and it's to no one's surprise if you follow me, the most overrated film of 2018 is none other than Black Panther. That is right, 97% of critics liked it, 8.2 out of 10, only 14 rotten reviews, and I guarantee you that at least half of them have been called racist because they gave it a negative review. Now, this film, is this film bad? No. When I say it's overrated, does this mean that any of the films on this list are necessarily bad? No. As I said, I, I was able to tell you good things about Black Klansmen, about First Reformed. I mean, there are certain qualities that are good to all these films. This is a B-level movie. This is like a B-minus movie. It's fine. It's a fine Marvel film. And yet, what you have is critics going out of their way to try and act like this is the second coming of Christ when it comes to superhero films, so much so that this film is now getting Oscar consideration. Let that just sit in your mind for a second. The Dark Knight, which is arguably the best comic book film of all time, the best superhero film of all time, didn't even get nominated. The, the, the whole Oscars changed the entire structure of what gets nominated and how many films get nominated because that movie got snuffed and so many people were ticked off about it. Black Panther is going to be and looking to be, it's already got nominated for SAG and people don't, you know, people want to say, how do you know it's going to get nominated for the Oscars? Well, the fact that a superhero film got nominated for the Screen Actors Guild for Best Ensemble Cast tells you that the film has a lot of support from the acting branch, which is a huge portion of those who vote at the Oscars. With that being you know, kept in mind, and knowing also that up to 10 films can be nominated depending on the percentage that it has, Black Panther is essentially a shoe-in to get nominated. And it really upsets me because is it a bad film? No. Is it a great film? No. Is it a film that should be the first superhero film to break through that glass ceiling and get nominated? Absolutely not. Because if you ask anybody, what is the primary trait of this film that puts this above Infinity War, which is arguably a better film? Again, if you ask anybody, what is the film of 2018? What is the most talked about film of 2018 that got the most people in the seats, that made the most money, but also to the one that got the most people talking because of that ending? Oh, wait a minute, that's right. It's Avengers Infinity War. And so the fact that Avengers Infinity War isn't even being talked about, and the only reason that they can give you is, well, Black Panther does wonders for diversity on screen. I'm sorry, but diversity on screen, just like with many other qualities that you, SJW, <laughs> leftist elitist in Hollywood, think makes something good or bad, is hogwash, is crap. Just because a cast is diverse, just because or any of those reasons that you love to give, that doesn't make the movie good. You can say that you like it. You can say that it's a positive aspect. I think that's fine. You can absolutely say that. But if your primary driving force to give it a high rating, if your primary driving force to say, this should get nominated for Best Picture, this should get nominated for Best Actor, etc., is the race or gender of the person involved, guess what that is? Just textbook. Racism and sexism. But we don't want to talk about that, right? Because it's it's only racist when you go one way. It's not, you know, me saying that's the most overrated film. Oh, I'm the most racist critic ever now because I've said that this is the most overrated film of the year. Not the case at all. As I said before, this is a B-minus movie. This movie is fine. I could probably watch it again. Maybe not, especially because of all the reaction to it. But at the end of the day, it's not even because of Black Panther. I think Black Panther is an awesome character. You want to know what my favorite iteration of Black Panther is in? In Avengers Infinity War. That's probably the best representation of Wakanda because guess what? They had more money and the person behind the screen, the Russo brothers, they actually knew how to craft good, awesome storytelling elements in huge battle sequences that didn't look crap. If there's one thing that a lot of people can agree on, Black Panther, especially the very end fight scene between uh, Warmonger and, and, <laughs> and Black Panther, is the fact that the CGI is awful. Them fighting and falling through the sky, if you haven't seen it in a while, go look at that one scene again. It's awful. It is so, so bad. And yet people will look past that for the sake of diversity. And I think that that is a very dangerous slope. That is a very slippery slope to get on. And I think that that's not a good enough reason. And just from an objective standpoint to say this is going to be one of the best films of the year and therefore deserves to receive an Oscar nomination. All I can say is that if this receives an Oscar nomination, it will just continue the trend. It's not like that, you know, this would not happen if it didn't get nominated, but it's going to continue the trend to make the Oscars just look like a complete joke. I mean, let's just be honest. When was the last time that you took the Oscars seriously? So many people always believe in the comments saying, I don't care about the Oscars. And most people don't. 
Just look at the ratings. They think that this is going to help them in the ratings too. So it's not only because of diversity and because they're woke, but it's also because they think it's going to help them in the ratings. The problem is, is that that's not how you bring the ratings back. The way you do that is by bringing in films that actually unify and bring people together, which guess what? Is a movie like Infinity War. Is a, uh, you know, a movie like, you could even say a movie like Creed 2. I'm one of the few that didn't like it, but that would be an example of a film that might pe you know, people might actually like. Now, of course, I would have suspect and I would question why they would nominate that type of film. And people always say, like, why? Like, why is it a big deal? The problem is, is that if you've been following the Oscars, if you've been following Hollywood for as long as I have, because I, you know, I'm like, oh, it's like I'm 60 years old, and obviously I'm 30 years old, and I've been watching movies since I was in middle school. I just did a podcast episode talking about my history of film. I've been watching films for a very long time, and I've been watching the Oscars too for a very long time. It's very easy to pick up on various trends, and no one could deny that they have a trend of going social justice. They have a trend of nominated films because of their subject matter and not because of the actual quality of the film. Just look to Moonlight, for example. Moonlight's a well-made film, but you cannot tell me that that movie won over any of the other films for any other reason other than it's about a black gay person. And it's all about that It's all about that intersectionality. If a film checks off intersectional boxes, it is automatically going to be on critics' top list of the year. And they'll tell you flat out. They'll say, oh, it's because of the tremendous amount of diversity and the tremendous amount of representation on screen. And you can like those things. I'm not saying that you can't like it or that you're evil for liking those things. But for you to try and say that the standard that needs to be followed is that, or that you are a racist or a sexist or a homophobe because you don't agree with that standard, that is where I have the problem. And that's why I will continue to speak out against this wokeness. I'll continue to speak out against this nonsense. Because at the end of the day, if you don't want to give me a press pass in the future, and because you say, oh, you said bad words about Black Panther, okay, at least I'm being honest. At least I'm telling you my honest opinion and I'm not being bought by studios to tell you whatever it is that they want me to tell you. I'm not like that and I never will be. So anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts on this? What are your, what are y'all's y'all guys, y'all's guys, what are your most overrated films of 2018? I would love to hear your own personal list. And do you disagree with anything on this list or do you agree? Let me know in the com let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, smash that like button because you know those woke warriors are going to attack me. If not for this film, you know for Creed 2. So go ahead and give me some support. God knows I need it. And also, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.